Good day chaps. So today's video will be a bit shorter than the normal as I'm halfway through a long video on the Malkara series. But in the meantime, I thought we could take a look at this rather odd little vehicle. A one-off custom job if you will. It's the Thornycroft Amazon Tank Destroyer. Now this is a relatively little known vehicle and much of it remains a mystery. It's uncertain if it even had a proper name. What is known is that the vehicle was based on the Thornycroft Amazon truck. And this truck, or lorry by British parlance, was designed in 1933 by Thornycroft from Basingstoke and was a two-man vehicle with a top speed of 50 miles per hour and a weight of 13 tonnes. The base truck was a 6x4 medium weight vehicle powered by a Thornycroft AC6 cylinder 7.7 litre petrol engine delivering 100 brake horsepower, and it was designed for domestic and export use. Thornycroft made quite a few different styles and looks for customers across the UK, although by far the biggest buyers were the railways, who up to that point operated a large fleet of Thornycroft trucks. But it was World War II that saw a surge in Thornycroft vehicles, with their military contacts, not only in engines and ships and such, but an order for some 5,000 vehicles, particularly of the Amazon and Nubian designs, along with thousands of other vehicles, which would see them working flat out throughout these years. The Nubian, for example, seen here with the Mickey Mouse camo, would go on to serve for many years, even post-war, and had the more common, flat-fronted, British-style engine cab, which, to be honest, I've always found rather ugly. Meanwhile, the Amazon had the more American-looking snouted engine, which would be most fondly remembered for its use in the RAF, as a crash recovery vehicle fitted with a cold crane on the back, and some 1800 of these machines could be found serving on RAF airfields from 1939 to 1960, the main difference being pretty obvious, they have a large 5-ton EMA petrol electric crane on the back of them. These vehicles served anywhere planes served, from North Africa to the remote tropical islands in the Pacific. If there was a runway and a chance to lift and drop a plane from A to B, then there was a very good chance one would find an Amazon there, and if not, then any of the other vehicles that mounted Coles cranes to achieve the same purpose. But we're not here for video on cranes, more's the shame, but for the Amazon tank destroyer, and we're going to use that name as there still has been no record found of any official name or even a project name. In fact, it's not even known who it was made for, or why. It has long been said that the vehicle was for the Home Guard, but that may well not be the case, as the gun is a 17-pounder, although in these photos the muzzle brake is missing. Now, while it's true to say that the 17-pounder did start to see some service testing in late 1942, it wasn't until 1943 early that we start to see it being fitted to any vehicles in any number. However, by 1943, Germany was already getting its face kicked in. They were losing in Africa, badly, and on the Russian front they'd lost Stalingrad and were about to be zerged by the Soviets. Meanwhile, the situation back home was much more secure. The threat of invasion was over, and while the Home Guard would remain active for a few more years, its primary purpose was superfluous. They did have some famously large and ponderous mounted guns on converted vehicles, but this was always obsolete equipment passed down, never up. Thus the notion that the boys at home would be getting the new primary anti-tank gun on a mounted fitting before the front line is quite unlikely. What is known is this was a period when the War Office was doing its best to find a way to fit the 17-pounder gun onto any mounting at all, and lots of options were put forwards. Vickers began work on the Archer. Birmingham Motor and Carriage Works had already produced the A30 Challenger in late 42 and further reworks in 43. So this leads us to the more likely possibility that the Amazon was an attempt by Thornycroft to join the race to get a mobile 17-pounder into action. This fits not only the timeline, but the requirements and the capability of the time. What we get at the end is an armoured Thornycroft Amazon hull, with a large opening at the back, 
with a rear-facing 17-pounder gun mounted behind an armoured gun shield. The weapon was mounted on a small turntable, offering a limited traverse to either side, as well as a gun depression of around minus 10 degrees. The armour of the vehicle also remains a mystery, as like so much else it's not recorded. The word 50mm bandies around a bit online, but the original sources are known to be very questionable. From the images we do have, it appears to be in the 40-50mm to 50 millimeter mark for the gun shield, which is possibly still made of wood at this stage. The armour extends to the rear of the vehicle's back plate, to either side of the gun, which is visible in the images. The rest of the armour remains more of a question, and while it appears to be around 15mm on the door sides, these were often thicker for hull integrity. What is more likely is that it would match up with the other armoured trucks of the time in the 10 to 12 millimetre range, enough to stop small arms and splinters, but very little else. Other than that, the weight alone would be pushing 18 tonnes or more. Inside, very few fittings are placed. There were no ammunition racks or other fittings, which indicate that this vehicle was stopped very early on into its development and may never have even gotten as far as trials. The very limited vision for the gunner is also readily apparent. To the front of the vehicle, we have an armoured nose section with the cooling mounted facing low and below, while the driver and co-driver are an armoured cab with no vision ports or plexiglass blocks added, again indicating a very early attempt. But the roof hatches above do open to allow one man to stand out of the cab. Whether this would have been for a light machine gun point isn't known. As to what happened to the Amazon tank destroyer, again that's not recorded, or at least no records have been found yet, but we can draw parallels between this and other projects and make speculative guesses. Notably that the rear opening would be very prone to splash from small arms. This would ricochet around inside the armoured cab and almost certainly be a failure from the design side. And the weight and the cross-country issues may have been an issue. When the war office was doing its best to have 17-pounders, they really wanted them on tracked platforms to keep up with the tanks. A wheeled vehicle would have been less effective. Either way, only one or two of these were ever made, and to date I found no evidence of them ever having got as far as even basic firing trials. But they do remain an interesting curiosity. There are no known versions of the tank destroyers left anymore. However, there are several Amazons with Coles cranes still lurking about. Some have been preserved and are on display in various aviation museums, and others survive in private collections. They were used post-war in private hands as wreckers and tow trucks, and while sadly many were scrapped or in scrapyards still, a few have been carefully put back together for shows and collections. Well guys, I hope that's something new for you today. It's an odd little vehicle and one I hope to stumble upon more in the National Archives by chance one day. And if I do, I'll let you know more. But until then, toodle pip. <laughs>